Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's uh, iNoot webinar. I need one of those. Um, it's business as usual here at Servium. Um, and you might not recognize the voice, but my name is Guy Sumner. I am an account manager here at Servium, and I will be your host today, taking over from uh, our face for radio, Steve Dawes. So welcome to series three. This is the second episode of the series. And these webinars are to help educate, inform you of the great technologies in the marketplace and create great experiences to our customers, allowing you to make the right business decisions. So I hope everyone has their smarties already, uh, so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy this webinar. So today's iNoot is all around hyperconverged backup. And today, with the help of Chris Snell from Exagrid. Uh, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Guy. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, there will be a recording of this webinar, which you can share to all your colleagues, friends and family, and it'll also be uploaded to the Servium YouTube channel to, uh, to have a look on there. Today's iNote is being delivered through Zoom, um, and any questions you have, we will launch a Q&A at the end uh, to help answer these later on in the iNote. So taking a look back in history, Friday the 13th, other than being my second iNoot, both of which have been delivered on Friday the 13th, um, in 1781, William Herschel sees what he thinks is a comet, but was actually the discovery of Uranus. And keeping on the uh, theme of space, Pluto was also discovered on this day in 1930. Um, and only last year, uh, 2019, the US grounds all Boeing 737 MAX aircraft following the second crash in Ethiopia. But other than that, today is all about the Exagrid iNoot. So for those of you who don't know Servium and what we do, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background. Um, so we are a provider of IT and a troubleshooter, putting you, our customers, at the center of everything we do. And we do this by adding value, delivering great account management, putting ourselves in your shoes with great customer services. We have a team that is very accessible and always go the extra mile for our customers. So how do we do it? By giving you access to the breadth and depth of our partner ecosystem. Whether it's through one of our partners or our vendors, we give you full access to those resources which you can fully utilize. There are many services that we can offer from Servium, and there is a separate iNoot on the Servium services, which can be found on our YouTube channel as well. This is the Servium Pathfinder and our approach, which puts you at the center, and no matter how small or large your requirement is, we work with you through the life cycle, from understanding what your strategy is, to helping you with design, implementation, and support. But the key is always the review, where we can ensure the project was always delivered on time, to expectations, and within, of course, most importantly, budget. So that's a bit of background on Servium, but today is all about Exagrid and hyperconverged backup and where that fits in with your business and how we can help you. So I'll hand over to Chris, who'll give you the information that you're here for today. So Chris, uh, I'll pass over to you. Uh, thank you, Guy. Uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, so as a very brief introduction to myself and to what, what Guy said, um, yeah, Chris Snell, pre-sales engineer here for the UK and Ireland. I, I do a lot of work with Servium. We've got some very happy joint customers between us. <clears throat> Been at Exagrid now for over four years. Uh, and previously to that, I was actually at, at Veeam uh, as well. And that's where I came across Exagrid. And it, it just made so much sense to me that I, I badgered my, my boss for a job. Um, and, and here I am now. Um, so uh, it wasn't a case of I bought the company, but it was a case of uh, I pay my mortgage uh, with the technology I, I believe in. So we're going to talk about how we provide a scale out uh, backup target to, to help our customers save money, um, protect more and, and reduce the, uh, the return on invest recovery time objective uh, as well. So let me click through onto the next slide. Uh, here we go. So a little bit about us, who we are at Exagrid before we look at the, the technology. Um, so we were founded um, in, in the mid-noughties, really, uh, about the same time as, as Veeam, actually. So we've, we've been around a while. Uh, the company's growing. Um, it's it's um, um, in, the, in the red, not in the red, in the, in the black. We're making uh, money uh, as we grow, very much self-funded as well. Um, as we expand the company. <clears throat> the last Gartner Magic Quadrant uh, called us a visionary, but actually they, they don't concentrate on this segment of the market anymore, which is, is deduplicated uh, backup appliances. And there's a few reasons behind that. One of the primary ones is that um, 
a lot of the companies that used to sell similar systems have stopped doing so. And it's a great testament to Exagrid that we've carried on growing and have continued to exist um, while that's happened. We have a great net promoter score. So that's uh, an independent rating between naught, sorry, between minus 100 and plus 100, where um, there's independent studies into the organizations talking to customers about what they think of the, the product and the support rating. So plus 73 is extremely high as a um, as an example, uh, Veeam have just moved up a couple of points from plus 73 and, and um, organizations like Pure and Nimble enjoy great scores uh, as well if you've got that, those technologies. So when the company was founded, engineers sat around a table and discussed what would make a great disk-based backup target. Um, and Exagrid is what was spun out of that. So we've got a very different architecture to many organizations. Um, deduplication um, backup storage has, has a bit of a, a, a dirty, um, is a bit of a dirty word at the moment. People look at it and look at performance issues around backup and, and recovery and, and you know, it, it can be quite a tainted um, architecture. So we've actually got a different architecture to that. As a result, we do win a lot of awards. Um, as we've been around for a while now, we've, we've got well over 10,000 systems installed across the world. So even if you haven't heard of us, um, you, you might consider us as a, as a great kept secret in IT. We've got a lot of very happy customers in all sorts of, of verticals, all sorts of sizes as well. And to verify that, we've got over 360 published customer success stories um, on our website. Uh, and actually, there's, there's a couple there that uh, came out of um, uh, working with Servium. Uh, as an example. Um, a lot of them are based around Veeam, so if you have Veeam, there's something there for you to read, but there are other backup products uh, involved as well. So what should you consider when you're looking at um, hyper-converged storage for backup with dedupe? Uh, what should you look at when you're looking at, at essentially dedupe backup appliances? And the first consideration is that you get great efficiency. Um, if you take a full backup every weekend and incrementals during the week, for example. Those full backups deduplicate fantastically, and there's a simple reason for that, and that's because um, it's almost the same data from one week to the next. There's obviously some change, but the vast majority of the data um, is the same. So if you're putting that onto tape or onto straight disk, you are using up a lot of resource that you, you don't need to effectively. Now, the first backup that you take, the first full backup doesn't deduplicate very well at all because it, it's a new set of data. There'll be some repetition, maybe some of the operating system data um, can be deduped and compressed. But essentially you can consider that as a one-to-one -one ratio. And then as you start adding more full backups every weekend, you can start considering them almost as, if you do two backups, you'll get two to one, three backups, you'll get three to one, because there's dedupe and compression involved uh, and that sort of thing. So the further you go in terms of number of weeks of full backups, the better efficiencies, better savings you're going to get from a, an, an appliance such as Exagrid. Now, there's obviously going to be a space saving involved with that and efficiency there. There's going to be a cost efficiency as well. And we've got all sorts of calculators that, that we work with Servium to, to justify uh, a return on investment, um, for example, um, as, as we go along. Also, there's going to be a power saving, cooling saving, and there's an almost intangible saving, which is a time saving, a management saving for our customers. And, and that, unfortunately, being very difficult to, to quantify, but it's probably one of the most important um, justifications for this kind of technology. Uh, I see so often in meetings, customers who are talking about the, the pain that backup gives them and the amount of time it, it's costing them. And when you go and put the solution together with your backup uh, application, it, it can absolutely free an individual from worrying about backups you can come in every morning and see great big green ticks in your backup application rather than oh it ran out of space again oh the performance was poor that sort of thing so the second consideration is what if you need a second copy of your data uh, and those of you who follow veeam social media will be very much aware of this 321 or 3210 idea uh, and that is three copies of your data in two different systems and one of those is going off-site so you should have a copy of your data going off site to prepare for the worst. Now, if you've already deduplicated at the backup site, then there's going to be a huge bandwidth efficiency by copying your data off to the disaster recovery site. It will probably be something like a 95% bandwidth saving. So 
you know, that, that could free up your bandwidth or, or even reduce the amount of cost if you can minimize the size of the bandwidth. Then there's three considerations that don't tend to get thought about an awful lot. So the first one is a fast ingest and short backup window. Um, and I'm gonna lean on Veeam again. Um, you can now take storage level snapshots, VMware, Hyper-V level snapshots and, and send them to your backup data. Uh, and the whole point of taking a backup is to protect your data and allow you to restore. So you want that um, data on your backup storage as quickly as possible. Um, so you need fast systems to achieve that. Once you've got your backup uh, on the backup storage, you need fast system, systems to restore it you want to use instant restore, sure backup, granular recovery from applications, and that, that sort of technology. They're designed to recover in a couple of minutes. Now guess what, if you try and recover from um, deduplicated storage, it's not just a straightforward restore process, you have to rehydrate an image, um, which could be spread across the history of the backup data. Um, so that can be very time consuming. I, I've seen single VMs take five hours instead of a couple of minutes if you have to rehydrate them uh, first. So that's a huge consideration when you're looking at dedupe technology. And the fifth point then is a fixed length backup window. It is very rare when I speak to a customer whose data set is not growing and not growing at an exponential rate. So it's great to use a backup software technology that can scale out and Veeam again is a perfect example where you can roll out multiple proxies to help improve your backup throughput. But there's no point scaling out your backup software if you cannot scale out your backup hardware at the same time. That is how you maintain a fixed length backup window. So where we look at some of our competition and, and how they struggle and, and give a, a, a dirty word to, to dedupe, um, the main reason for that is that they are inline and they are scale up. So what do we mean by inline? We're talking about the fact that the dedupe has to take place during the backup. Um, flow. So there's two ways of achieving that. One of them is letting the dedupe appliance do all that work with all the full data set sent to it. And that takes huge amounts of compute so that it doesn't slow down your, your backup window. It involves using more, um, Intel or AMD's latest and greatest and most expensive processors to achieve that. Or you could do a client-side dedupe um, to, to preempt some of that. Um, and that has the benefit of reducing your bandwidth uh, requirements, but it means that your clients are going to be doing the dedupe. So you're using your, your compute cycles on your clients to achieve that. And quite often you'll get charged a software license to, to do that as well. Once the data has all landed on the appliances, what happens is it's all deduplicated, as I mentioned before. So any type of restore has to go through a rehydration. So instant restores are slow, normal full restores are slow, copies to tape are slow. It kind of becomes a massive bottleneck in the process. And again, the whole point of backing up is to be able to restore quickly in the event of, of an issue. These appliances are typically sold as a compute front end with a tray of disks and a huge amount of empty space, more trays that are available, and you can add the disks into them later on as you grow. But what you're not doing is adding any more compute. So your backup window grows because you've got a set amount of compute, but a growing backup volume until ultimately you fill up that appliance and then you go and have to do an upgrade with a forklift or you buy a second island to manage. So how are we different at Exagrid? Uh, you know, how are we going to speed things up? How are we gonna save our, our customers money? So we've set up a different architecture. As I said, the engineers sat around the table and thought what works with backup? So they created an appliance that's split in half. So it's all fast spinning SAS disk um, and what we do is we write the backups to what we call a landing zone. So the landing zone is just a section of the disk which is not deduplicated. Um, it's just straightforward, fast spinning disk. So we're not going to do any dedupe during the backup path. So we are working as quickly as the backup product intended in the first place. Once the data starts to arrive at the landing zone, a process called adaptive deduplication kicks in. And what that does is use variable block sizes, all sorts of clever algorithms. We've di written different backup algorithms for different products to achieve um, the, the best dedupe rates we can get. And that deduplicates to the other half of the, um, the disk. We call that 
the retention zone. So what we're giving is a performance tier, the landing zone, and a capacity tier, the dedupe or, or retention zone. So it, it's it's a, a tiered storage, um, if you like, um, as well as being deduplicating to save money. So we're giving performance and we're giving a cost saving. So because we can deduplicate at a more casual pace, we've already got the data safe on the appliance, we don't have to have the latest and greatest processes in the appliance. So that's where the cost saving comes from. We do have more disk, but we have more cost effective CPUs in the appliances and less RAM. And that actually gives a cost saving compared to, to what some of the other products on the marketplace achieve. And at the same time, we're giving fast performance um, as well as being able to get the data off site quickly because the adaptive dedupe as well as um, moving data uh, or replicating data actually locally um, to the, the uh, capacity tier, the dedupe tier, it also sets up a replication mirror if you want one to a DR site. So it's again removing the amount of CPU cycles we use by doing that dedupe and replication in, in one process. The real key though to the landing zone isn't fast backups, it's fast restores. Um, so the landing zone is sized up by people like myself, the, the pre-sales engineers, systems engineers. We have a suite of calculators that we can use based on um, a lot of real data from customers. And it's our job to make sure that the landing zone is sized to keep a week's worth of backups. So that's one full backup and one chain of incrementals. What that means is we'll deduplicate a full backup soon after the backup job is finished. We'll put that down into the capacity tier. And that means then the landing zone, the performance tier is, is ready to be flushed. And when the next full backup comes along the next weekend, it will just literally push the old backup out of the way as long as it has already been copied to the retention tier. Um, and then you'll have a new full backup sat in the landing zone. So you'll always have the most recent full and the most recent chain of incrementals in the landing zone. And typically where a customer needs to recover from is the most recent week of data if they need to do a fast restore. Obviously there's a chain of historical data which is deduplicated in the capacity tier um, as well. So you can perform recoveries from the older data. It will take longer, but you are getting a, a cost saving by deduplicating that data. How do we maintain a fixed length backup window? So as well as offering this clever architecture for performance and for capacity, what this architecture allows us to do is to scale out and that is absolutely unique to us um, as a backup DQ target. So on the right hand side you can see a customer that's starting with 60 odd terabytes of data. We put in an appliance that works with that and their ingest performance is, is X terabytes an hour. As that customer grows, their backup uh, volume is growing. We put in extra appliances and you can see the performance increases to X terabytes an hour, four X terabytes an hour, eight X terabytes an hour. So each appliance, if it's the same appliance in this case, will increase by um, the same again. So you're scaling out your architecture, much like something like Nutanix, for example, and that's allowing you to maintain the backup window as your backup uh, volume grows. Now, currently our biggest appliance is 63 terabytes, hence why it's on the, on the chart. Um, and we can have 32 devices in a local architecture. 32 times 63 terabytes is a whopping two petabytes of full backup can be achieved per week in, in the biggest architecture. Now, I'm not assuming that anybody on, on this call is going to be able to achieve that sort of volume, but it does mean that as a prospective customer, you could be comfortable in knowing that we're going to be able to, to grow with you and bigger appliances are planned in the near future um, as well. And we do have customers all the way from say 30 terabytes of full backup a week, all the way up to multiple petabytes. On the left hand side, you've got the way that I would say not to do it, which is where you're just adding trays of disk into a pre-existing appliance with a compute front end where the backup window just, just breaks uh, continuously. So these are the appliances that we, we sell into the marketplace today. Um, and they do scale, uh, if you look at the middle number uh, column, capacity for weekly full, they scale from being able to handle three terabytes a week all the way up to 63 terabytes a week. And you can mix and match appliances. So if you had 100 terabytes, you might add a 63 and a 40 together, and that gives you the ability to ingest 100 terabytes, for example. 
So that's the landing zone size, the performance tier. Then the left hand usable capacity shows the total capacity of storage in the appliances. And you can see it's always a double almost uh, what is in the um, capacity for weekly fill column. And so that means that the, um, the size of the landing zone is the same size as the size of the retention tier. Um, that's out of the factory, it's a soft border. It can be moved around very easily actually without, without disruption. But for a typical customer, 50-50 is, is about the right mix. On the right hand side, you can see the throughput figures. Um, if we pick on the 40 terabyte device, you can see that um, it can handle its work at eight terabytes an hour. And now 40 terabytes divided by eight is five hours. Five hours is a typical backup window for all of our appliances so they each have a different amount of compute and disk in, and, and the like they can all handle their backup uh, volume in five hours now that does rely on the backup product and it does rely on the network being able to throw at the appliance quick enough and that's very rare when we see that happen so you can be comfortable that you, you will get great performance um, out of out of an exagrid sat behind uh, your backup product um, better than you're seeing at the moment almost certainly in terms of the replication, I've already touched on, on how we achieve that, um, and everybody should have a copy of their backups off-site um, for, for that, that awful moment when they might be required. Um, so we mirror a backup share from the, the primary data center to, to off-site. Now that off-site could be your own second data center, your own private cloud. It could be your own private cloud in a hosting or colo facility, such as Servium could offer, for example, if you haven't got your own second data center. It could be hybrid cloud where um, you could um, get the, an appliance on an OPEX model. Again, um, it could be in a variety of places or it could even be in the public cloud where we can replicate to Amazon currently or um, to Azure in the near, near future. So that allows you to have a dedute copy of your data sat in the public cloud that you can recover from either in the public cloud or, or send it back to, to your physical site. Um, you can get obviously great bandwidth efficiency that I've mentioned before. You can throttle, schedule and encrypt um, that data as well. Now, interestingly, your DR target doesn't need a landing zone because we're mirroring um, the capacity tier, the retention tier in the DR site. Uh, you don't need a landing zone. So you could have a half size appliance in your DR target. So there's a cost efficiency there as well if you're keeping two copies of your data. Now that does mean that all your data would be deduplicated and require a rehydration, but most of my customers take the view that if they've lost, lost the primary data center, they have bigger problems than the recovery speed. You can use the backup application and something like a Veeam copy job is a perfect way of moving the data from your primary data center to your DR site. That does require a landing zone. Um, so you typically end up with larger appliances if you're doing it that way. So who do we work with? Um, these are all our friends, if you like, in the uh, market space. Uh, and the, the key ones are at the top of the list, Veritas, NetBackup, uh, and Backup Exec, Beam themselves, obviously, Commvault uh, as well. And we've got some integration technically with all three of those products in, in various forms. Everything else we support as well. Uh, so Zerto is an interesting one who they carry out replication of virtual machines and then they can create backups from the replicas. We are their preferred target storage for that. Haiku is an up and coming um, backup application that works with Nutanix. So if you love um, hyperconverge and love scale out, then we have a great story uh, with them as well. Now, I've spoken to many organizations who have DBAs who are a prickly uh, type of um, character. They can dump directly to the exagrids as well. And you can have multiple backup products, um, all targeting a single appliance, if you like. So a really quick uh, run through on um, oh, let's get that slide uh, on the integration with Veeam. We have Veeam code embedded on the appliance. And what that means is we have something called the data mover that is written by Veeam sat on, on our appliance. The data mover is essentially a second proxy. So your true backup proxy sends the data to the green box, our appliance, um, not via SIFS or NFS, but via a Veeam protocol. So that means, first of all, it's, it's quicker because it's designed to move Veeam backup data. So it's about 30% quicker than writing to a public share. 
but it's also not writing to a public share. It's writing to a Veeam share on our appliance. And that Veeam share is created essentially behind a, a logical air gap. So it's not a true air gap, air gap. We're not writing to tape. We're not sending the data off site. But we've created a, a private share on the exagrid that can only be accessed from the Veeam server using a predefined username and password that does not need to sit in Active Directory. You can see layers of security appearing here. We're also going to add immutability to the product in a few months time so you could have a, a, a time lock on the data on your device um, so the data that's moved down to the the capacity tier the retention zone can be locked away um, data on the landing zone will be open for attack but anything that's being copied down will be locked away it also gives faster recovery we integrate with veeam's um, sober uh, technology scale out backup repositories what that means is as customers add extra appliances to the architecture veeam just sees it as extra capacity in one repository so you just have one repository that's your target for all your backups and you can grow that without having to play with your backup jobs you just add more capacity and then it also adds load balancing and fault tolerance to the mix as well and if you've been looking at um Veeam's cloud tier, it integrates into that as well. So you can move your really old data off to the cloud. It's probably cheaper to keep it on the exagrid, but um, you, you do have that uh, functionality open to you as well. So those are all the points that I talked about um, with Veeam. It's included here um, so that if the, the slides are sent out, you, you've got something to, um, to, to refer to uh, later on. What's inside the appliance? It's a very clever server with a heap of disk in it. That disk is configured as RAID 6 with a hot spare, so it guards you against multiple disk failures. Um, there are redundant power supplies. In terms of NICs, every appliance comes with four 1 gig ports. There's IPMI, and you can also um, have 10 gig ports, which come as standard on the bigger appliances. Uh, and there's also an option to upgrade to 40 gig uh, if required. So it sits on the network, it doesn't sit in a SAN. There are two flavors of device, which is encrypted and non-encrypted. Uh, and that's about as difficult as it gets for customers. What NICs do they need and do they want encrypted or non-encrypted drives? Because you do have to switch off the software's own encryption because nothing can deduplicate the scrambled data that's created by software encryption. So you switch off your software and then obviously everything's secure on the exagrid instead. Um, and coming up towards the end here. So we've got a very different support model. Some of you may have seen this with some of the more um, modern backup, sorry, more modern storage vendors, different types of, of support to what you're used to. So each of our customers is assigned to a level two customer support engineer. These guys are trained up on all the big backup products. Um, and indeed with some of the vendors, particularly Veeam, we've got cross support uh, integration as well. Um, these guys are responsible for installing the product for you via WebEx, for example. They're also responsible for helping do hardware replacements where we've got a next business day delivery um, concept. They are not just there as a support rep though, they're very much there as a technical account manager. These guys are there to help you get the most efficient use out of your appliances, set them up correctly. They train you on using the product as well. They essentially become your right hand man for backup. And if you allow them, they can have um, direct access to the appliances and you can just send them an email asking them to do something and they can do it for you. So again, helping to simplify backup, nobody wants to spend too much time on it. You can ask these guys to really do a lot of that work for you. You can see on this slide, there's no license fees to track or renew. So everything I've talked about is included if a customer buys an appliance or if you buy two appliances, you get replication as well. There's no different tiers of software. There's nothing to pay extra for. It's just a simple skew for the um, appliance and for the one for the maintenance and that's it. So it makes uh, Servium's life easy and it makes your life as a customer easy. You can see what you're buying. You don't have to worry about anything apart from obviously maintenance and, and support. And we monitor the appliances for you in the different different tiers of that. Again, whether you let us um, have access to the appliances or not. So the final slide isn't talking technical. Um, we talked about how to save you money um, in, in the um, introduction. So we offer price protection for a start. If a customer buys an appliance today at a certain price, that price is then kept as a ceiling price for the next five years. So it means that if you have a new project or you merge with another uh, organization and need more backup storage, you know exactly what that's going to cost you as a maximum. Prices come down, but you know that you know it's not going to go any higher. 
the maintenance is limited to a three percent rise every year so you also know that you're not going to see a 50 percent cliff face or worse in the future because we're trying to force you to buy a new appliance that's not going to happen it's going to be a maximum of three percent realistically it, it goes along lower than that maintenance is also based on the hardware price that you pay so if you get a great deal at, at a certain time of year then that's a deal on the lifetime of the maintenance on that appliance so we don't offer you a uh, you, you know we don't put a price on the table and say okay we're going to take 80 percent off that um but your maintenance is going to be charged at the full price that, that doesn't happen it, everything's a you know, just up front and a good price anyway. There are no forklift upgrades, as I've mentioned, because we can scale out. So you can buy small and, and grow big later. Or if you buy big now and you need a little bit extra, you can just add that into the architecture. There's no guesswork. I do all the sizing as a pre-sales engineer to make sure everything's right. And, and that's pretty much underwritten by Exagrid as well. And then you can just scale out if you need to grow along the line. So you don't need to try and forecast how much you're going to grow for the next three years. Really interesting next point and obsolescence. We don't end of life our hardware. We have never end of life to single piece of kit. So as a customer, you can invest today and know that you can use that asset for as long as you want. Realistically, spinning disks do have finite lifetimes. So you might want to look at swapping out after six or seven years, but we're not going to end of life the kit and we're not going to make the maintenance so high that you want to swap it out anyway. So there's no hidden costs. Everything up front, as I mentioned, including the install, all the versions, every, every bit of software that's in there, replications included. And even the worst case, we'll swap the hardware out um, if there's ever a hull failure, which I'm led to believe we've never had a single hull loss uh, of an appliance. So all in all, try and skip to the next slide. If I wrap that up then, so the landing zone is our unique architecture it's what allows us to take us away from being a pure dedupe device it's a tiered uh, device so you've got a, a performance zone you've got a retention zone um, which then gives us that scale out hyper converged idea as well lowest cost when you start racking up lots and lots of weeks of uh, backups it's going to be much cheaper than throwing cheap disk at it uh, and then our support team, apparently 85% of our case studies talk about them. Uh, they really do become your backup right-hand man. So I think that is me wrapped up. Um, hopefully I'm on time, uh, about half an hour. Um, no, are the, um, that's, no, that's, that's great. Thanks very much, Chris. And that's, uh, that's, that's a really good insight to Xgrid and, um, and, and what it's all about. So no, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, what, uh, so, uh, we'll take some questions now. So if there's any, um, any questions, um, you want answered, um, please just type them into the, into the Q and A box. Um, and Chris will, uh, will help us, help us answer them. Um, I've got a couple here, um, already come in. So I've got a question here from, um, from Paul. Um, he asked, uh, how quick is it to recover your data with Exagrid's hyperconverged backup solution? And is it really the seconds and minutes claimed on your website? So, yeah, I mean, as, as I went through the, the architecture, the, the performance tier, the landing zone is just RAID 6 um, fast spinning disk. So it is as fast as if you were throwing it onto a normal disk array, um, if you like. Okay. So there's no, no performance uh, degradation there at all. Okay, okay. Um, and another one coming from uh, Liam. Um, he asked, how easy is it to scale the solution and uh, will I need to upgrade any existing hardware? So you could take an eight-year-old device uh, and add a device today um, to it. It's all integrated into a single web, um, web page, and you would be able to run the two machines together on the same web page, for example. Um, and then if you're using Sober with Veeam, you don't even need to manage your backup jobs. You're just extending your uh, backup repository so it, it's it's ridiculously simple and you get somebody else to do it for you anyway the support team okay <laughs> um and uh, michelle has asked uh, will my it team require any specific training to manage the solution um just a little bit of hands-on training during the install process that, that the support guys provide so uh, essentially no almost everything they will do would still be through the backup application um so they they just need to know how the two integrate in the backup application. Uh, and then you can just leave Exagrid to do anything. And if anything comes along down the line, you just ask the support rep to help. 
okay. but it, it's very easy to do anyway. Thank you. And a couple more uh, come in. One from Alex um, here. He says, on your website, you talk about an evergreen approach to your pay-as-you-grow service. Can you, can you explain that approach in a bit more detail? Uh, well, yeah, it, it's all based on, on that last economic slide, really. Um, so it, it's not quite the same as the pure evergreen um, offering. I believe evergreen is from pure, um, but that it does end up with the same result. The fact that we, we don't end of life is the key there um, so that customers can sweat their assets for as long as, as long as they like. And because we can scale out, you, you can keep adding um, as well. Okay, perfect. And uh, one last question this could just, just come in uh, from Emma. Um, she asked, is the solution suitable for enterprise grade businesses only? That's a good question. Um, it's suitable for everybody because we can get down to very small sizes, but realistically, um, the smaller units, they, they come with a cost associated with our, our intellectual property. So typically the smaller units are only used by bigger customers in branch offices. They like the technology, they want to standardize and, and they'll put them in their smaller offices. So it may be difficult for a smaller organization um, to, to buy into the technology um, because of that. I would say that around 30 terabytes of full backup a week and above is where the, the price just becomes very compelling. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much for that. Um, if you have um, any more questions, um, please uh, drop me an email and, and we, can, we can get back to you. Um, so now there is a poll uh, which should pop up um, if all goes well. Um, so if you could fill that in, that would be much appreciated. It helps us deliver these webinars and to help fine tune them for the future. Um, and any ideas you do have, um, please, please suggest them. We can look into getting them added to the, to the series in the future. Um, so thanks again um, to Chris uh, from Exagrid for your time today. Um, so it was very, very informative. So thank you very much for that. Um, the, thanks, next, no, <laughs> the next webinar is on Friday, the 27th of March, and uh, Steve Dawes uh, will be back in the, back in the hot seat. Um, and with the current need for businesses to adopt more flexible working, we are partnering with VMware to discuss the benefits of implementing Workspace ONE. Um, the invites for that will be out soon, so make sure uh, you sign up to that when you, when you get those. Um, this will also be uploaded to the Serving YouTube channel, uh, where you can find all of the past iNuke webinars, along with plenty of content and videos for you to have a look through and, and enjoy. So, um, once again, thank you all very much for joining us today um, for today's iNuke webinar. Um, enjoy the rest of your Friday, and, uh, and have a great weekend. Thank you very much.